The phone rings and they said, this is the, the bone marrow registry and you've been matched as a potential donor to a 10 year old boy with leukemia. That's all we can tell you. The first thought that went through my mind was, if one of my kids needed a bone marrow transplant to, to stay alive, what would I say to the donor? So I was a really active kid. All growing up, I played sports. I was eight years old at the time, and I had a bunch of bruises like all over my legs. We went to the doctors, um, and I got blood work done. Actually, at that point, he said, we need to go to the hospital right away, because Chris's hit 95% of his blood was leukemic. Obviously, it's pretty much devastating to all of us. You, know, you hear about these things, but you never really expect it to be your family. Specifically when thinking about leukemia, essentially what happens is that your regular white cells that are supposed to fight off infections, one of them makes a copy of itself that's wrong and your body doesn't see it, your body doesn't clear it. It's sort of all the machines start making the wrong copy and it takes over. In general, you can cure leukemia by giving different types of therapy that wipe all of the wrong cells out reset all the machines, and they go back to making healthy white cells again. The very first inpatient that he did, he was in for six weeks with chemotherapy, and it was six months till he went into remission the first time. I was diagnosed in January of 97. In June of that year, I um, was in remission. So I was all good, but then in January of 98, I relapsed. So at that point, they were saying the cure would be that I would need a bone marrow transplant. My role here at Wilmot Cancer Institute is I'm a bone marrow transplant nurse coordinator. I've been caring for patients here for 35 years. Many families, when they're um, going through transplant, when you don't find a match within the immediate family, that is the additional piece that there's, it's an unknown. We started looking into the registry to see if, if there was a match for me. We tested my family, nobody in the family was a match. Christopher would be like, did you find me a donor? Did anything new? And then all of a sudden, we found this young man that, that popped into the registry that ultimately ended up being Ed. I had two questions on the phone. It was, where do you need me, when do you need me? On June 2nd, I'm at Mass General Hospital and they're harvesting my, my bone marrow. I do remember going into a, a bookstore because they said I could send an anonymous gift along with my marrow. I bought Dr. The, the places you'll <laughs> go and I could write a letter, but I couldn't have any identifying information in the letter. To the best friend I have and haven't met, here's to all the places you'll go. Enjoy them because you've earned it. Live well, my friend with all my hopes and prayers, a friend. He was thinking about me while I was going through that and it only made me want to meet this man more. Christopher did well. He did have some um, scary moments through his transplant that, um, that he got through and by all means, getting stem cells is what he needed to actually really cure this disease that he had. So there are rules with donors and it's really to preserve the patient and the donor. Um, so a domestic donor you can't meet for a year. So Christopher, very early on I realized that every time he walked into clinic he was like bombarding me with questions about his donor. So we decided that we would do a little game. I said, okay, I'll give you a clue a month of where your donor's from. You know, a year goes by, Christopher's doing great. I said, okay, I'm gonna do a, a scavenger hunt. So on my way to work one day, it, I snuck over to their house and planted a scavenger hunt. I was out there doing the scavenger hunt at probably 4.35 in the morning. And then I got, got to the end of it and I found Ed's number and I went right inside, grabbed the phone and called him. I just couldn't wait. It was five in the morning, a little <laughs> early wake up call for Ed. <laughs> There's this young boy's voice on the other end. Stop crying. On the other end of the call. I just hear his voice saying, hey, it's, it's Chris, I have your bone marrow, and I just lost it. We became one big family when we met, and I mean, we've been seeing each other every year, at least probably two to three times for the last 25, 26 years. Obviously, Ed is a part of our family, um, and the two families are bonded forever. Ed is a gift. The funny thing is, Ed doesn't feel that way. He feels like we're his gift. I'm the one that won the lottery here because I, I had the opportunity to do a very small act. I don't think it was a small role. I mean, you saved my life, I think. It's a life worth saving. <laughs> I appreciate it. 
The outlook for leukemia has really improved over time. We are unlocking those genomic sequences. And what really intense research is, is helping us make individualized treatment called precision medicine. So instead of treating the patients of tomorrow all in one bucket, we're treating them as an individual. One important thing about clinical trials as well is that our patients are not here for our trials. Our trials are here for our patients. Those clinical trials are not research in this experimental way. They are monitored research trying to be better than we were in the past. Chelsea and I uh, met back in 2018. I think in, in June of 2018, it was Chris's 20 year uh, anniversary of his bone marrow transplant. So his mom had thrown a, a party. I just met everybody. And I like this one's my favorite actually. That's your favorite one? Yeah. That one's really good. Coming in as an outsider and you just see it, all the love and the friendships and just the family that everyone is. I was like, oh my gosh, this is wild. Like Chris wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Ed and I wouldn't have met my, my husband and li we're living this great life together and it's just like a domino effect. When we were planning the wedding, like, we were talking about just obviously who was gonna officiate the wedding. Chris said to me, well, what about Ed? I was like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> like, I love that idea. Um, and I was like, that is icing on the cake to a, a perfect day. It's probably the only time in my entire life I've been truly speechless. To see Chris and Chelsea together at the wedding and since, this was what was supposed to happen. I mean, it's just like, Hollywood can't write this script. I know. <laughs> I mean, they really can't. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You're the reason. 25 years later, I'm still here. I'm healthy, thank God for Ed, and you know, thank God for everyone at Wilmont that, that got me through it. I think most oncology nurses, um, you, you get more than you give, you really do. And to see families and to be able to be part, to be part of the journey is pretty special. I am thankful to every donor who is supporting the research to find better cures of our patients for tomorrow. What I can tell patients of tomorrow is that thanks to the research done here at Wilmot Cancer Institute, we can cure you.